enlightenment is much more simpler to achieve and much more easier to achieve than training for the Olympics. <laughs> much more easier. Because Dhatta Yoga Pratipika also says that in order to achieve enlightenment, you need to only indulge in sadhana for one and a half hours. That's all per day. That's it. That's good news. Okay. All other training, you need hours and hours of training. And this is the most important training in our life. This attaining yeah, or meditation. Now, now how to control the mind has been a great problem for most people. Is, has, it, has this been a problem for you? Controlling the mind? All of you seem to be people who are able to control the mind. So it may not be a big issue, but out there, <laughs> out there a lot of people are suffering. They say that they cannot control the mind. Right? They, they should be here, not you. <laughs> this cause. In this course we teach some proven techniques of mastering the mind which were developed by the ancient sages of India among whom Patanjali is most well known. Don't look for Patanjali in India, he's no more than he lived 2500 years ago. The practice of these techniques has helped many many individuals in this life, I mean this world, to achieve the goal of life. What is the goal of life? What is your goal? If someone asks you, Hello, you are yoga practitioner, you are meditation practitioner. What is the goal of your life? Think about it. <laughs> and self-realization means understanding our own self. When we understand our own self, right? When we are able to understand ourselves, then we can start thinking about understanding others. So that if we don't understand our own selves, then why should we embark on the journey of understanding someone else? Can we ever find solution to them? Can you ever find the solution of understanding how my mother works, how she is in her mind, or my father, or my spouse, or my brothers and sisters, or my children? Can we ever find any solution to this? because first and foremost is understanding myself but doesn't mean that we can, can't do these both at the same time as I embark on the journey to understand myself I can also embark on a journey to understand the persons who are closest to me can, can be done and yoga and meditation helps this tremendously Along the way, practitioners have also benefited from these techniques to gain success in their everyday lives by mastering the art of concentration. And uh, now look at the people around you in your life. And also look at the people who are most successful in their lives. They seem to have something which is very special, which is very rare. And that is known as concentration. Right? Many studies have been made about people who are most successful. I'm not talking about success on the material aspects. I'm talking about a housewife who is able to successfully bring up her children. Well behaved, well educated, wise children. So like this. A cobbler who is very successful in mending and repairing the shoes that you give to him or her. So they have seen that from in all walks of life, in the vast spectrum of living in life, they found that the most successful individuals are those who have a superior state of concentration. And all of us suffer from this dissipated state. Let me try to read a book, right? Let's say Yoga Me has about how many pages? 30 pages. It takes us three days. Right? We read and then something comes up and we go and do those things and after three days we read and then after three days we read we forget what are the first three pages. Right? Don't worry, 99% of the population is like that. So if you become 1% of the population through these techniques, can you imagine what's going to happen? It's easy to meditate, it's the easiest. Any is already meditating. Meditation is a state of relaxed concentration. <laughs> it's a state of relaxed concentration. Right? And all of us think that to concentrate we need to be very stressed up. I need to concentrate, don't disturb me. Isn't that what we usually do? Don't disturb me, don't disturb me, I need to concentrate. 
Are we able to enjoy that? Whatever we are doing, if we have this kind of awareness, are we able to enjoy that? can enjoy. But yoga gives us hope. It says that meditation is a state of relaxed concentration. The more relaxed we are, better the concentration. Meditation is not an activity that is... Meditation is not only... Meditation is not only an activity that is easily performed, but that is also within everyone's reach. Regardless of the person's lifestyle or religious or philosophical persuasion, all this is in material. In no matter what state one is, no matter what is the background of the educational status of this person, all this is in material when we want to learn meditation. Most of the time we get lost, and we get distracted. Meditation is an art, a science where this continuation can take place for hours. And for a certain period of time, maybe even 10 minutes, but that if the continuity is absolute, you may feel that you have done it for hours. It's so intense. It's so not based on time and space. Like placing a candle in a place where there is no air, no wind. You must have air. No wind. And then it's so absolutely steady. Can you imagine if the mind is like that? Absolutely steady but still lighted up. Right? As opposed to the very common uh, understanding of meditation as being a place which is empty. Darkness. But meditation in yoga is like a space where there is one absolutely Steady flame. The mind free from disturbances, it is in a state of meditation. It is engaged in one pointed thinking only. Still the basis. It's still basic. This is not meditation, but is the beginning of meditation is when there is one pointedness and the continuity of one pointedness leads to a state called dhyana. The practice of meditation helps everyone to find the ultimate truth. At a certain time in your life, when all your oblig obligations to your family, to your children, to your work, everything has ended, there will be a trigger in you to see, to understand what is the truth? What is truth? Why am I here in this world? What is the purpose of life? It cannot be just waking up in the morning, sleeping at night, in between arguing with people, or eating, uh, working. It cannot be like this. Day in and day out, just doing this doesn't make sense. There must be something else to this life. Have this come to your mind? Have you asked these questions? If you haven't, then I just have to start this. <laughs> Now, the term dhyana is broken into two root words. D, D-H-I, D means the mind, and dhyana means moving in and out. Isn't that how the mind is? There's always an activity. One day you are attracted to something, after five years you are repulsed. The same thing that has attracted you in the beginning, after five or six years, you feel that you want to get rid of it. Correct? Right? Isn't that how the mind works? Attraction and repulsion, something which is very attractive today, after 25 years is not so attractive anymore. All right. Now, dhyana means the journey of movement of the mind. It is the mental activity of the mind. Meditation is observing. Meditation, in one aspect, is being aware of what is happening in our awareness. And we relate it back to one of the concepts in yoga, in the yama and niyama, which is called swadhyaya, or studying, studying what is happening. Here many individuals or many books say that it is reading of books, studying of books. But in fact, it should be studying of the self, the mind, with silence, maunam. And if you are talking, can we study the mind? So it's a kind of quietly observing the mind. Stability is dhiram or stiram of the body. And detachment meaning that the detachment of the senses from the objects so that we can focus inside, remain steady in silence and observing the state of the mind which gives many of the benefits of meditation. 
Now, many of us, one of our our problems or our issues with meditation is that we say that I don't have the power of concentration. I just cannot concentrate. You ask me to do this, I cannot. I cannot sit there and concentrate. It is true that we cannot concentrate. What we lack is the ability of our minds to concentrate on everything under all circumstances. But what we will learn in this course is that we don't have to concentrate. Concentration is not a primary concern. We will we have these many ways of approaching yoga. One is we develop concentration and we go into meditation or we develop meditation and naturally learn the art of concentration. In this course we jump into the the eighth, no, the seventh limb. There are eight limbs of yoga. You can jump into any limb and learn yoga. It is not that you have to start from yama, niyama, and asana, and pranayama like this. You go step by step. You can in fact start from any of the limb and attain mastery and flow into the other states. In fact, if we can master the art of meditation, all our other practices can blossom. It can become much more deeper, much more intense and much more beneficial in the shortest period of time. Since time is the most important and most valuable and the rarest of commodity, we have everything but we don't have time, correct? Then we have to invest into the most valuable commodity and get the fastest return the shortest period, within the shortest period of time. Because every other limb takes a long time. Talking about the yamas and niyamas, even in order to master one of these, for example like ahimsa, ahimsa means non-violence, it takes a lifetime. It takes a lifetime because anyone can agitate you. Even if you go downstairs, if someone smaller than you, weaker than you, calls you some name, something very uh, may, that can make you very angry you will immediately shout at them or raise your hand right if you are involved in a slight accident and if someone comes and you get very angry because you feel that you are not wrong you see <coughs> the steering wheel you take the steering wheel automatically take the steering wheel steering lock this ready right so Meditation is the only way to understand uh, is is one of the easiest way I would put it I would, I would put it like this not the only way but it is one of the easiest way and one of the shortest way and one of the uh, methods to achieve what we call as a state of bliss or ananda in Sanskrit it is called ananda. <coughs> 